I don't know what it is about the Eve story that I feel so connected with. It might have been when I was reading Braiding Sweetgrass and hearing different origination stories. There was this beautiful connection between women and nature. And yet the origination story that came from my culture and from my upbringing wasn't about that at all. It was about the disconnection, about the throwing out of woman from nature. And to me, that always seemed off because I know that I feel most whole when I'm outside, when I'm in the garden, when I'm climbing a mountain, when I'm watching a sunset, when I'm lighting a fire, any of those things that feel so natural and ingrained into who we are. So how can our origination story be the separation from nature? This isn't the first time I decided to do a painting of Eve. In my Silent Generations collection, there is also a portrayal of, of Eve. And one of the things I focus on with Eve is that she's not white because realistically, she wouldn't have been white. Most likely coming from the middle to lower parts of Africa, most research now is thinking that Eve, Garden of Eden, uh, the Garden of Eden was, um, was created in Botswana. So obviously, probably not white people there. So in this portrayal of Eve, I put her in the lush greenery of kind of a jungle feel, which also happens to be one of my favorite places to go. We have the foliage really enwrapping her like it is part of her. And in her hand, she's holding the forbidden fruit, the, the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil. And as we discussed both in the intro and with Cindy, that, that the fruit was not an apple and most likely a pomegranate. So she's holding this pomegranate that she's taken a bite out of. She's looking down at this fruit as if she is starting to recollect that she now knows something she didn't know before. And on her arm next to this pomegranate is the snake that has encouraged her to take this next step into adulthood, into leaving the nursery of the Garden of Eden and embracing who she was fully meant to be, knowing what is good, what is evil. It's having true wisdom. This painting was kind of a struggle for me. It took me a lot longer than I thought it would to paint it. And I don't really know why. I, I struggled with getting the body parts just right and making the hand look like a hand, which if you've ever painted a hand, it's literally the worst part of painting. Um, I'm getting better at it, in which case I hate it less. And so maybe I'm even starting to like them. But anyways, then I wanted to make sure there was lots of detail. When you look at a rainforest or a jungle and you look through into the foliage, there's so many layers and there's so many different ways of reflecting light and shadow and creating depth. And so the first time I painted the leaves, it felt really surface level. It felt really flat and bland. And so I had to keep going back in and adding more depth and adding more darkness and lightness and reflection and shadow and really building up this forest. And after layers and layers of doing this, it, it really came into fruition. I'm very proud of how these leaves turned out. The very last thing I added was the snake on her hand. And it's only very last because I totally forgot about it. <laughs> I had this vision of what I wanted this painting to look like. And I got so wrapped up in trying to perfect this hand that I was struggling with so much that I'm, I've already signed it. I'm already done with it. And I'm like, oh no, I didn't get the snake. And it was a perfect accident because by putting the snake on top, I still got all the depth and the shadows and the lines and you can kind of see the tendons in the wrist. So all of that detail comes in, but now you have this snake looping on top of it. So it really does feel like it's on top. And I have absolutely no idea what kind of snake was in the Garden of Eden. I don't know the size of the snake. Honestly, if we're thinking of something in Africa, I'm probably picturing a very large snake, but I wanted the snake to be on her arm. So it's a smaller, more low key snake. Um, I found some imagery that had these beautiful different color scales. I actually found a fully black snake that I really liked, but I wasn't sure that it would read as well. So I played with this snake having these blue and black scales and then around the head, it turns into these red and orange type scales and playing with the shadow and the reflection off of the individual scales, as well as the shadow 
uh, the snake makes on her arm all came together to create this really beautiful depth. And it's one of those reminders I have every time that I paint. It's that the details matter. It all comes back to the details. A painting never has the life that you want it to have until you get into those nitty gritty details that you're like, nobody knows that there is a shadow that lines right under your upper lash line on your eyeball. That is a fact, there's a shadow there. So learning these quick little tips can be helpful and looking at photo references to just notice those details and then be able to fill them in in my paintings is a continuous challenge and it always up levels the art so much more. So if you are in need of a reminder of your origination story, of this beauty of being born into the garden and taking the garden with you wherever you go, that every little squishy step that you make in the world leaves flowers behind it, then this painting of Eve was made for you. You can find it in the Modern Magic Shop. Both the original and the prints are there now.